Martha Raddatz interviewed three Trump supporters. And I understand that Martha didn't want to challenge them per se uh, on their beliefs in well, their cultish belief in Donald Trump. I get it. But I wondered if she could not have asked some other questions beforehand. I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. Tell me about yourself and how you came to like Donald Trump. They are the definition of diehard Trump supporters. George Rivera, Jim Vinup, and Angelic Schneider. Three voters in the critical battleground state of Pennsylvania. Angelic, born and raised in the Lehigh Valley, a public school teacher for now 25 years. I've seen education change drastically over the last 20, 25 years, um, but not as much as I've seen it in the last four years um, under uh, President Biden. And I've seen a division in our country that I don't think um, he's going to be able to, to, to unify. I don't like the fact that because I say that I'm a conservative and because I say I'm a Republican, I'm treated with disdain. President Biden has stood up and, and, and talked about the MAGA Republicans and, you know, and the just the disdain that he has for the voter. And I represent middle America. I mean, I'm one of those voters. And I believe that Donald Trump, you know, for eight years, he, he's been attacked. And and if he's elected president, I believe that he'll make, you know, he'll make policy change. He'll secure our borders. You heard some of his opponents during the last few months say the wall wasn't finished. Mexico didn't pay for a wall. Does any of that reverberate with you? And you wonder, can he get it done if he wins a second I term? think he can get it done. You know, he's not a career politician. He is, a, you know, a businessman. And you might not always like the way he says things, but he gets things done. Restaurant managing partner George Rivera at 43 has never voted in a presidential election before, but he says he's now all in for Trump. To me, he's anti-establishment. He's not with the status quo, and he's actually for the people. Having him elected back into office is the step that we need to take to fix, to make this country great. And what was wrong with the country? To me, what's wrong with the country is we're under financial tyranny, we're under corporate tyranny. What does that mean? Explain that to me. I mean that we're, we're overtaxed, it's hypertaxation. And you think Donald Trump can change that? And do you blame Joe Biden for, for that? Well, it's, I don't blame Joe Biden. I blame his failed policies. Just because the S&P 500 is at an all time high doesn't mean that gas isn't higher than it was several years ago. I run a restaurant. So the cost of beef went up five to six percent. A lifelong Republican, Jim Vinup, says Trump hasn't let him down like other politicians he supported in the past. When he came down the escalator, I thought, oh, this is crazy. You know, this guy, he'll never get anywhere. Well, as things went on, I became a diehard Donald Trump fan. Donald Trump does what he says. The only reason he didn't get a lot more done is because they gave him grief every minute of every day. So here's this guy coming down the escalator. A rich guy, married three times, pretty foul mouth. What was it and what is it about him? Has he made mistakes? Oh my goodness, yes. But I do believe that his heart's in the right place for me. How many, how many presidents, how many politicians have come out on stage and hugged the American flag? That really means something to me. You've also heard, though, from former generals, from John Kelly, who was his chief of staff, yeah. say he would never, ever vote for That's Donald right. Trump again because of the but way you've he heard treated from other, veterans. You've yes, heard but from I, other. And, and, and you said that, and he hugged the American flag. But, but you've heard what he said through those people about the military, about wounded veterans, about uh, Normandy. That doesn't bother you. Yeah, things, things he has said bother me. Am I giving him carte blanche? He can do anything he wants? No, no, absolutely not. I mean, I've said many times, geez, I wish he hadn't said that. But Kelly, I lost respect for Kelly. Mattis, I lost respect for Mattis. Uh, Millie, I lost respect for Millie. And these were people that he put his trust in. And you know what? They stabbed him in the back. You, you said something that interested me, which is Donald Trump cares about 
me. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, the common man. I th- I really think he has a heart for the common man. I really do. Um, did did George Bush have a heart for the common man? Mm, I don't think so. He let me down. Mitt Romney let me down. Not only do these voters dismiss Trump's many legal challenges. My opinion is that the justice system is being weaponized against certain individuals. They stand by Trump's false claim that Joe Biden lost the 2020 election, even if it takes a minute. Do you think the election of 2020 was I don't know that it, I, I, I don't think that it was... Yeah, I do. I think it was stolen. I, I, I don't believe that that many people voted for Joe Biden. I, 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 and I will never believe that. I, I don't believe No matter how many lawsuits or court cases there No were. matter how many lawsuits or court cases, when, when something is proven, um, I think you have to investigate the other side of it. I take it you believe the election was stolen. Yes, I do. You know, people say, well, there isn't, there isn't enough to overturn this particular election. That Really? You put it all together. I think there might be. Why aren't we looking at it? How do you bridge the divide in this country? You guys have very strong opinions. You have certainly heard people who do not like Donald Trump. I think if we really start to look at how we really have a lot more in common and we all really want the same goal. We want safety and security for our country. We want, you know, um, our, our, our children to thrive. We want, you know, to be able to pay our bills. I think we have to get control of the media. I think we really have to get control of the media if you want to unify people because I think that they have a way of really controlling the narrative. All right. I want to start with the idea that uh, the the first person starts to talk about, well, you know, Donald Trump is a businessman. Well, Donald Trump was never really a successful businessman, even having been handed a spoon in his mouth. Uh, what Martha could have asked a question like, if somebody has had five bankruptcies and if they've been bailed out by the system and if they, you know, would you still consider that person a good business person? I mean, there are questions like that she could have asked, right? Uh, she also uh, said w- when she watched the woman say how much she thought Donald Trump cared about them, ask a simple question as a woman. Uh, would you really uh, ask uh, if you had a daughter and there was somebody that she's approaching that goes ahead and have shop talk about? holding women by the groin or having, well, you know the word he used, or the possibility of that person having been uh, convicted of or or a judge saying that under the, the real terms of today, what he did to a woman was rape. Would you feel comfortable with that person marrying your daughter? And as such, then, do you really feel comfortable having such a criminal as your president, you know, there are questions like that she could have asked in a very nice manner, in a gentle manner to bring them along with the person who owned the business. Uh, he, he used a lot of catchphrases that everybody can pick up if you listen to right wing radio. But when she asked, uh, why exactly are you saying that he just used buzzwords? In other words, she could have asked them. Uh, exactly what did Trump do economically for you? And when he answered, did you realize that the tax cuts that were given, the very small tax cuts that went to the uh, working class was temporary, but the other part of the, the massive tax cut proper went all to rich people. Is that what you're talking about when you, th- when you say he cares about you? When Donald Trump talks about, uh, when, when the other person says, He has the heart. He has us in his heart. Exactly what does that mean? When did you ever see him do something for you? There are so many questions that she could have asked in a civil manner. Uh, When the other person says, uh, you know, which presidential candidate would you see hug a flag? She could have asked, what does hugging a flag really mean? In fact, isn't that anyway closer to idolatry? Not that I mean, we all know that was an act by the president, but come on, there's so much we could have asked. When the other guy says, 
that even when told that the president is under all these investigations, they're using the same talking points. Uh, the justice system has been weaponized. So anything that has happened to this president has been weaponized, even though much of it we've heard directly out of his mouth. Look, this interview, I get it. She wanted to get them to express themselves. And I think the interview was not for those people. The interview was for everybody else to see, the millions of people that are going to see this, to understand what a MAGA person thinks like. The, the, idea, the idea is to see how that MAGA person thinks. And when the millions of people that are watching this, if given the right questions, even if they answer the question in a silly form, those that are listening will be informed and be able to see how mind-bogglingly inept our the inept the rationale is to support a Donald Trump. It won't I mean these people may be completely delusional. These people may be completely a part of the cult. But my God, ask the questions, let them give the stupid answers, don't confront them, but then the rest of the audience will be able to see who they are and who they they hope they are not. And if you can make sure that they see how those people look and are embarrassed for anyone that would think like that, maybe they will do better themselves. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.